told you. It's like I was telling you, Rob, and I was telling you, Mike, don't turn on the razzle dazzle till people are here. All right, everyone. Hello. Hi, and welcome back to the Sideshow Art Print Expo. We've got a really, really great interview for you guys. I am Paul. I'll be your host throughout this. Again, we have an incredible interview. We are so, so very excited to be joined by the team uh, from Vice Press. Again, spanning, you know, multiple pillars of pop culture, starting in just 2015, seeing where they are now. It is insane. And we have them here live to talk about maybe that journey. Um, we'll probably span into what it's like to work in a comic book store. And of course, as per usual, we'll talk about My Little Pony, everyone. I've been told that there is a uh, a, a lot of a uh, discussion that we should have about that. So without further ado, please welcome from Vice Press, Matt Ferguson and James Henshaw. What's up, guys? Welcome in. Hey, folks. Hello. How are you doing, Paul? You all right? Yeah. It, it's always funny, yeah. right? It's always, like, really awkward. It's like we were just talking for, like, 20 minutes behind scenes, and we have to make it seem like this is so spontaneous. So, yeah. great job. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Great to speak to you for the yeah, first so I've time. I've just managed to log on now. <laughs> doing great. Look at everyone. Guys, it's really good. I, I, You know, I didn't even ask you. I legitimately didn't ask you this before. Where are you streaming in from? Are you overseas, or are you here now? In the United States, we are in England, the United oh. Kingdom. <laughs> yeah, okay. I feel like I'm on one of those little uh, Eurovision screens. Have you ever seen that? I'm James. I'm <laughs> over in England. Hi, here's the scores. Yeah, yeah no, we're over in little the UK. Points. We're both kind of around yes. the Sheffield area. So okay, that's like the north, the north of England. Vice yeah. Press is uh, that's that's home base, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, okay. if you've kind of know Robin Hood and all of that lot, I actually live about five minute walk from Sherwood Forest. Oh, so there you go. Okay, okay, very. Yeah. I'll um, I'll I'll make a note to make sure. There's a dull to... fact for you. There's yeah, there it is. Really Sherwood Forest. Here. It's trees. <laughs> yeah, trees. You get trees yeah. around places. Trees. I know that. We have those. <laughs> See, <laughs> building bridges together, everyone. Amazing. Well, James. Uh, Matt, welcome. And seriously, we are so excited to have you guys. We we have a whole art print expo and we couldn't not feature. Uh, seriously, one of my, like, I'll be honest, I'm kind of new to the Vice Press game. Uh, very clearly, I've got some of your guys' work here that you guys did with Carly AF or Carly mm -hmm. F. I actually, yeah. is it AF or F? I guess I have, I think you guys are the right people to ask. It's Carly AF. So I think she's kind of playing oh, okay. on the the kind of af kind of mm -hmm. thing but also i think it's the the initials of a surname too yeah. without giving away a surname um oh. so it's quite a clever little pun mm. yeah well it is fantastic again this is the universal monsters set that we have again another thing that i really love about vice press is the sets that you guys sell and especially like the size because i'm kind of a I don't have a lot of wall space, so when I do, I yeah. have to be very selective. And this is a great representation, especially of like one of my favorite sets of that Universal Monsters. Again, side.show forward slash uh, Vice Expo. Super producer Mike's got that somewhere here. There it is. Go there. That is a landing page. It'll take you to Sideshow's uh, section where we have everything that is either newly announced or up for sale from Vice Press. So um, with all of the marketing and shilling out of the way, let's actually get to know you guys. <laughs> um, so please. Let us know, um, and again, I, I, I did a little bit of research, but let everybody out there know, like, what is Vice Press? Like, I know it started in 2015, but like, yeah, yeah, what yeah. is Vice Press? Like, what does it mean to you guys? And then what do you both specifically do there? Do you want, do you want to take this, Matt? You, you go first, take... James. I'll go first. So um, so the, the, the kind of concise version of the long, boring story is I used to write for um, film websites. I used to, in my spare time for a hobby, used to write reviews and things, and I got into collecting mm -hmm. posters. Um, so I was starting to interview some artists around that, and Matt lives obviously quite close to me, so we went and met up for a few beers, got quite friendly, um, and we both found out that we kind of had this kind of goal to kind of make and sell posters. But originally it was around stuff that was fairly um, unrepresented in the poster scene, so very British-centric licenses like 2000 AD, Judge Dredd, which was the thing that we kind of bonded over. So we um, mm. we got the license for 2000 AD and grew out yeah. from there. They, we, they kind of took a risk on us. We started doing British films, Attack the Block with Studio Canal and things like that. And then we just started expanding out into things that we really loved, John Carpenter films, Universal right. and stuff like that. We worked very closely with um, 
bottleneck gallery and then kind of now have the relationship with you guys which is which is great but over that kind of period of time Matt and I became we kind of pretty close friends now um, in fact I think Matt's probably one of the only people I see in in person very much anymore um, <laughs> yeah, but it's true. kind of weird wow. because so we kind of both have a passion for this. So everything that we do, every film that we do, every kind of TV series or comic that we do, one of us is really passionate about and generally gets the other person into as well. So it started out as a bit of a hobby and it's just kind of grown from there, really. We kind of now, it's um, pretty much becoming both of, um, both. well, it's the main thing that I do now and Matt mm-hmm. alongside yeah, me well, what he does as well. I was like a, an artist beforehand. And, yeah. you know, you want to do things as an artist, don't you? You want to make posters. And I like films and stuff, so I want to make film posters. But then it's like, how do you do it if somebody doesn't <clears throat> ask you to do it? So then oh, we, yeah. I, we're just like, well, okay, we'll just do it myself. That was kind of yeah, yeah. like the uh, impetus for me was I wanted to make a just dread poster. Yeah, doors aren't yeah. open. you got to go build the door, right? Exactly, so. yeah. <laughs> so, And then you just go from there and then i already had some contacts and stuff as well from like my previous work so it's kind of all fed in over the years it's been quite good and it's kind of okay. added a new layer like going back to kind of what we both do in the business so i tend to handle the business side of things and the what's my guess the boring side the kind of admin stuff and matt art directs and kind of does all of the creative directing so with matt's background in what he does he can then work with artists like Carly above you and other artists to kind of help develop those and kind of pass on skills to them. And maybe where they've not worked in posters before or more commercial work kind of helps steering those. Mm. So Matt's, Matt's kind of underplaying it a lot because in terms of our output and what we do, Matt's kind of the, the very much the brainchild in terms of visually what Vice Press is. Right. I and so. I would say, you, just, you, just do what, you just do what you think is best. That's yeah. all. I mean, and you have to like it all, right, Matt? Especially yeah, exactly. as an artist, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, we, we've talked to so many artists and they're so critical. So, I mean, that, I'm sure if you can impress yourself, everyone else is going to love it. I hope so. That, the, the key is is to do it for yourself and then right. the rest should hopefully follow, right? That's the way I've yeah. always sort of approached things. I mean, and you guys talked about earlier, you know, how much, you know, you guys sort of bonded over your shared love for films and uh, just different sort of maybe creative elements. So, I mean, would it be safe to say, maybe both of you speak to this um, from different point of views, maybe more of a, I would, would it be fair to say maybe more of a logistical, uh, you know, mindset, James, and more of the creative? Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you, with so much love for so many of these properties, again, uh, 2000 AD, Judge Dredd, and then so many that we probably don't even have time to get into, how do you narrow it down to not only I want to work on this license, we want to have this look, but like, what does that process look? Um, you know what, as an example, let's bring up the new uh, Big Lebowski print that we dropped today. Okay, um, cool. Yeah, yeah. Before. Okay, so this is an incredible print. So who has the idea saying like, this is the color scheme, this is the idea. What is the process from start, you know, to beginning to having it cover my face? <laughs> well, you we you got you got the license sorted out and then we're like oh we need an artist and i we met tracy ching who's the artist at new york comic con a few years ago and um i'd already sort of known her online and stuff and i've always really liked her and her work and we were just kind of like she'd be perfect for the big Bowski because she's really good at portraits mm-hmm. and she also is can do these like you know, like the sort of vector style, the 50s stuff in the background and everything. Right, right. So I just go to Tracy, do you want to do Big Bowski? And then she does a sketch. And then that was it. She's, it was, I, I, this one, I didn't have to sort of push her to do anything um, because mm. it was just good, which is <laughs> the dream. <laughs> it's living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of fun and frustration saying, like, well, damn, that's just really good. <laughs> yeah well then then the other side of that is that so like with tracy with this one matt's right we didn't kind of um have to change anything but then when sometimes an artist sends in something and we do kind of suggest changes it's not because we don't love the concept or love where they're going it's it's kind of uh-huh. how do you how do you elevate that how do you kind of oh cool that really works or maybe that doesn't because there's been posters like it before or the license or maybe won't like mm-hmm. that or thing you there's a lot of considerations mm-hmm. outside of the 
but when it comes to the licensors, if if there's something that we feel passionate should be involved, we'll kind of speak that, talk that through with the licensor and say, this is why we think it should be in. So yeah, with a with a print like this, like Matt says, it's great because Tracy kind of is great at those um, those kind of portraitures and can pull uh, can do those really well and kind of get that. But that's not to say that when an artist we kind of do suggest changes is because we think it's bad or maybe needs improving. It's just because how do you pull things out to elevate? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I, I'm curious, you know, for something like obviously it's probably safe to assume that you're both big uh, big Lebowski fans. So, I mean, are there are there points where you have to pull back as fans and switch it to, you know, the business mindset of saying like, you know, Tracy knows what they're doing. We, we have to just kind of pull back. And as a fan, you want to see certain things. So where does being a fan, you know, start and end for you, especially with some of these licenses that you guys care for so much? Mm, that's interesting because for me, it kind of doesn't so i'll just get enraged if there's like a blockage in some way from some from somewhere uh saying you can't do this or you can't do that because mm. it, if it's something that i think is integral to the feel of the poster or the film then i'll uh yeah yeah. James knows okay. what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like I was saying earlier. If we kind of if if um, when we put something to a to a license or and if they're kind of like mm, maybe you should change this or take this out, generally if we kind of disagree with that, but there's a justifiable reason as to why we disagree with that, we'll have um, we'll kind of have a bit of a dialogue with them and and talk them through. Yeah. And sometimes, but then the flip side as well is if they've got like a good reason why you can't have something like for example you couldn't have this likeness of whoever because uh, they've not approved the likeness or they, right. they don't want anybody to run then you have to take that into account and usually it's good to find out the limitations i think beforehand yeah. so yeah. can you have the title can you have this actor can it be this mm -hmm. that and then they'll you've got that and then you can feed that to the artist and say look you can't do the likeness so come up with something that doesn't have the actor on or actors on right, it, right. you know. So it, it, yeah. it, it's it, it's better to try and nip those sorts of things in the bud beforehand, really, and then you don't yeah. have any problems. Yeah, Hopefully. just have the full the full card up uh, up front, and you know exactly because then you yeah. can start working from there. Yeah, we're you know as someone who we, we license obviously quite a bit, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we're very familiar with how um, yeah it can completely change the creative process and it can um, almost provide I believe that it'll provide and you guys can speak to this really fun challenges and you're like I, yeah. I think if we didn't have that challenge we wouldn't have gotten this result Definitely. exactly and I think the other print that we released with you guys today is a really good example of that the um, the Scott Pilgrim Mike, one let's bring it up there we go that's me doing a segue. Um, nice one, James. Professional. <laughs> so like, <laughs> nice plug. With, with Scott Pilgrim, for example, um, likenesses aren't a no-go, but because of like the League of Evil Exes and you've got Sex with Bomb in there and you've got Ramona and you've got Scott, kind of getting all of those kind of together to get the actor's approval and then the kind of administrative logistics behind all of that can be quite a challenge. It's not impossible, but it can be quite a challenge. So then right. you look somebody like George Bletsis, for example, who has this great kind of um, caricature, this great cartoonish kind of way of creating things that doesn't infringe on actor likenesses. Because, mm. like, I guess Funko is a great example. You've got these kind of um, these kind of um, base models that you kind of work around, and you take elements of that char character, so you know it's that character. And I think mm. without doing um, without doing George a dis disservice comparing it to Funko, it's that kind of thing. So you haven't got that. So you can kind of build it around it. And another artist that's kind of really good in that regard is, is Tom Whalen, for example. So oh, it's yeah. how you take that, it's how you take that, um, I guess, that challenge and take and turn it into a bit of a, a, a kind of a creative tool almost in terms of creating something that, mm -hmm. that fits around it. And then you get something as unique and as vibrant. And it kind of, it's also a good mesh. I mean, I'm a big Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim fan and Edgar yeah. Wright fan. You've got this mm -hmm. great mesh between the comic, with, between Brian Lee O'Malley's comic and Edgar Wright's film. And it kind of brings it together really, really nicely. Mm -hmm. I agree. And then, you know, what's interesting also about this print is there's the foil variant as well. Yes. So I'm curious, 
Yeah, and so this is the foil variant. Could you guys speak to is what exa- what elements of this are uh, are different in foiled, and what does it mean exactly to have a foil variant? Right, I could go over this because this one was a complicated print to achieve. So the foil is basically the paper that it's printed on. So it's shiny, uh, reflective paper, like a mirror. Uh, in this case, it's going to be rainbow foil. So it'll have like a rainbow sort of oh, effect to it. That's um, so when you move the poster or when you look at it at different angles, it'll all be shimmery. And so the sort of uh, neon areas and stuff will um, have that vibrancy, like pop even more. And then also there's a what they call a white plate, which is that's printed on underneath on top of the foil so that stuff like the title and the characters will be slightly um, more opaque. So you it oh, creates like a cool two-tone effect. So the when it's printed, the character should stick out more than the background, basically, mm-hmm. is the sort of idea with the foil. And then it, it just makes it pop and be... A lot more um, vibrant, yeah. Okay, I see. So, I mean, as so as I, I play the role of uh, noob here, when when looking at something like this, if maybe you are unfamiliar with it, would it be? Uh, hey, Mike, let's take the let's take this off screen here. Um, would this almost be something very similar to when you would get when you see like a holographic on like a yeah. sticker or something? It's exactly, I mean, exactly really- the same. It's like you know, like a holograph holographic trading card. It's that uh, basically, like and you Charizard, can get, per se. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get you can get different kind of papers. So this one's on rainbow mm-hmm. foil, but we've we've done silver foil, lava foil, which is like a mottled lava effect and stuff. So it's like a really interesting way to make a variant that's not okay. just different colors, you know. Yeah, and we've got a uh, drop mag who I know you guys are friends with in the yeah. uh, in the chats saying that all the latest foils look pretty amazing, and they do. I I'm I'm yeah, a huge fan. So I'd like I'd like to see. I mean, if I can just we're here now. I mean, right? I think legally you guys can't say no. I'd like to see these re released in foil. That'd be pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> it would be cool. But like that's, legally, like that's binding. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Fair enough. Um. Uh, yeah. All right. So it's like Matt says, it's kind of using the using the foil as part of it. Like a good example is when we did George Blessis' Morats and um, the variant. Oh, we tried right. to get the foil to match the um, Magic Eye just to give it that kind of cheeky kind of element kind of thing, which was kind of cool. Um, and then with Matt's the thing, it was a lava. So in the sky, it kind of gave almost an Aurora Borealis kind of feel to the to the star right. thing. So it's kind of how do you use it as an element rather than just a gimmick for the sake of having a, a variant kind of mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. So, you know, it, it sounds, you know, like you're both so very, very deeply passionate, not only about the, I guess some of these, as I said earlier, some of these pop culture pillars, some of these things that are just so very easily recognizable, but a lot of other licenses and properties that maybe are less known, maybe in the States or other parts of the world. So, I mean, I'm curious, what are some of your favorite, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll kick it over to James and then Matt, like, what are some of your favorite licenses that you've been able to bring into the vice press house get some incredible work up that you're like it's maybe 10 years ago or maybe in 2014 before you guys got started you're like i never thought i would have gotten it done like are there some that were just very personal to each of you yeah definitely so um yeah so for me it was that first kind of 2000 ad license that was a really important one because that was something that was quite i guess meaningful for me because i grew up reading 2000 ad my dad was a 2000 ad fan and kind of i used to read his comics and things so being able to work on that and then work with people like carlos Isquera, who's now sadly passed away and work with mick mcmahon who were kind of the, they developed that judge dread character and worked with the team there that was that was phenomenal because that was kind of like a childhood dream come true but then things like Jurassic Park for example which is one of my all-time favorite films um you know kind of getting to work on that the I guess the um the uh the great white buffalo almost is is Ghostbusters like that's (laughs) kind of the thing that is kind of we we have you and your Ghostbusters man (laughs) if there's a Ghostbusters toy or a Ghostbusters poster or a Ghostbusters anything James will get it it's like yeah. wow, incredible! Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the same with Transformers. So there you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was like, <laughs> "Hey, the the tea's calling the kettle there." Um, yeah. But 
Yeah, I mean, I I mean, I mean, completely get it. I'm that way with like Doctor Strange or Green Lantern. There's just these things that are just like so deeply personal to yeah. you, whether like it's attached to like a personal memory or, or whatever it may be. But I mean, it's great to see, you know, you both specifically. And then Matt, you said Transformers, but maybe under the the umbrella of Vice Press, has there have there been anyone you're like, dude, I can't believe I'm Yeah, like, we there's did. Be moments that you have that. We did with Vice Press and it, we put it on with Bottleneck in New York. We did the amblin esque um, exhibition, which was all the sort of Steven Spielberg slash Amblin films. And oh, we ended right. up working directly with Amblin and we had Steven Spielberg sign off and I had an ad up in Times Square and it was just like, I, I couldn't believe I had an ad up on a giant <laughs> billboard in Times Square and we did this exhibition and it was like, yeah, all these like, Back to the Future, Goonies. We went, we did a screening of Goonies, didn't we? We did, yeah. Down in Manhattan. It was like, just like, is this real? Is this happening? <laughs> it was just, Bonkers. it was, it was pretty phenomenal. There's been a few of those moments, like the, the Amblin esque one. And then when we got to go to New York Comic Con as mm. kind of attendees and kind of go in early when nothing's open. And the yeah, buzz wears off fast though with New York oh, Comic Con yeah, 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 when yeah, you're yeah, working. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like no, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home and watch Golden Girls. I, I think I'm I think yeah. I'm good. <laughs> um, <laughs> so what's your uh, what's what's your Ghostbusters, Matt? Is it Transformers? Uh, it, I mean, I've done I Transformers. You do You've I done did Transformers, Transformers last year for the 35th. Uh, it was Star Wars. And I did the 40th anniversary of Empire Strikes Back. That, that's how so. I um, out, it's Star Trek now. I want to do I want to do Star Trek the Motion Picture and Star Trek oh, Wrath wow. of Khan and probably Star Trek Three and Star Trek. Yeah. Four and I would do five as well. Star Trek five, yeah. it's rubbish. And I do Star Trek six. <laughs> uh, just carry on. I really like Star Trek, so yeah, Star Trek's okay, the, we'll, the big we'll, one we'll to sign post, up. James. Don't worry about it because I work um, loads with Marvel and stuff, so I, I've ticked yeah. off everything now. Oh no, I've not. I've never done a. I've never done a, a Batman comic book cover. I'd love to do a Batman Ooh. comic book cover. Like, as a as yeah. a huge Batman fan myself, I can. I I, I would know. very much like to see that. That would be cool. A friend of ours, um, Dolly's just um, done a cover for um, the the chap that wrote or co-wrote Boys. The Boys. He's doing a he's doing a Batman comic series, and mm. Dolly um, has just done a cover for issue one. I think. I'm not so, jealous yeah. at all. <laughs> That's it. You just got to put it out there, Matt. We, you got to put it out there, and it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, manifest, yeah. Right? I put it out there with yeah, Star yeah, Trek, yeah. and it's not happened, has it? Because I, I was really quite bolchy yeah, online I... about that. Like, come on, Paramount. Yeah, yeah but and, I know uh, that. it's not worked so, out. So you know, we can always step one is subscribing to Paramount Plus, and then that gets you in the door. So, <laughs> yeah. um, well, we don't I, have so that. I, I... We don't have Paramount Plus here. No, it all well, goes on to just normal weird streamers. What's that weird streamer that Star Trek's on now? Uh, Star Trek Discovery, it's not on Netflix because here it was on Netflix and it's gone on to something really weird. <laughs> I'm going to call it Parachute or something like that. That's, that's not it's what it's close. <laughs> it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> anyway, so, I digress. Yeah. So, what about, um, so, you know, something that I'm always curious about, like whenever we get to, um, or again, whenever I'm fortunate to talk to people in your guys' position who have seen a, a, a company and an idea and a passion project through you know, past, you've gotten past the veil of like, oh, this is just something we do for fun. And now you're like, it, as James, you mentioned, this is something you do full time. So uh, with Vice Press starting in 2015 and now, I mean, we're coming up on almost a decade of you guys doing this pretty soon. I'm rounding a bit here, but yeah. um, with, uh, with, you guys, with you guys doing this for so long now, like how has it changed? Like, I mean, has it changed in ways that you're like, well, I can't believe that we've sort of, you know, varied or if we've sort of detoured or have some of those detours been incredibly fortunate and happy like what has that process been like from 2015 and now do you want to take that Matt? i don't really know because when you're in it you're just in it i live in the moment so nice. i'm kind of like just like from one thing to the next like so i didn't go full-time professional artist until about a year before that in 2014 was when i first went full-time professional artist. I mean, I've done stuff before, but um, I did. I took the dive and went full-time. And then um, 
it all very quickly just snowballed. So it's been like a sort of a really fast. I just feel like we've been caught up in this since then. Yeah. And now we're here. So I can't really say anything other than it's just been sort of like being caught up in a snowball, just building more and more, yeah. I guess. That's how I'd I mean, it's a great way to put it. I, I mean, I completely understand. I couldn't even imagine from like, from your your standpoint, it's like I, I was just sending an email trying to do this one particular license, and now I'm doing a show, and we have so yeah. many various licenses. Like I'm sure it just it's like that. Well, you well, you mentioned it earlier, Rob, with uh, Paul, with the um, with the kind of Carly prints above you. Like we kind mm-hmm. of started off doing um, kind of the the comic prints and stuff, and we kind of the film posters was almost kind of secondary, and then the film posters became like the primary thing. What we were conscious we wanted to do. We didn't want to replicate what other companies were doing out there. We wanted to make right. sure that we kind of had our own USP. So we introduced the Vice Press Editions line because we didn't want people just to kind of come to the store and have the limited edition stuff, which had all sold out and things along those lines. We wanted to have things that people could readily have available. So we had mm-hmm. products that were for super mm-hmm. hardcore collectors and other folks if they were kind of fortunate enough to grab it while I was in the store, but then more casual mm-hmm. fans as well. And then also kind of how do we kind of create smaller things so that, you know, folks that are families or maybe don't have the kind of benefit of space so that you can have something up in their kids room or in the hallway or in the kitchen. And and that was still kind of that still kind of celebrated those films and those kind of properties that they really like. So we were kind of conscious very much around that so that we could start to kind of grow how we do it. And then we kind of look in now at how we can apply that to perhaps other other well, avenues, other products and things without, again, without copying other people. But how can we kind right. of take this, how can we take what we do, which is create unique art, original art, and apply it in different ways so that different people in different mediums and formats can have right. access to that in their chosen kind of collectible? Yeah, it's a bit like like just the other day when it got rumoured that there's going to be like a, a Lego Optimus Prime, and it's like... Because I like Lego and I also like Transformers, so it's like, so it's that sort of <laughs> crossover appeal. Yeah. I like that sort of thing. So, yeah, like, if I, we I could mean, do that sort of thing where you've got the artwork, because I do a lot of stuff for for um, uh, DVD and Blu-ray special editions, like through okay. my own work, and then it'd be cool, I think, to be able to do vice press artwork in that sort of mm-hmm. world. At, because it's like steel book collectors and all that sort of thing. It's like a whole right, different right. Yeah. zone, isn't it? So it's, it's yeah. like thinking how you, how you can apply the artwork to different um, yeah. products, basically. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just merging the two avenues yeah, 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 yeah. constantly walking. And then we have like yeah. the, the third Beetle in Vice Press, the kind of Brian Epstein kind of thing, which is kind of Flory, uh, which is an artist called Flory, who Matt and I are friends right. with and is kind of... Yeah. We, we who we chat to and talk to and he's he's a phenomenal graphic designer and kind of when it yeah. comes to designing products he's not only a great artist and does posters for us but actually in that kind of um that kind of ability to create those products and that product design and all of that kind of stuff as well yeah so that's kind of create added a new dimension to what we do as well in terms of how we mm-hmm. kind of do it's like how so, you package stuff because it's not just giving somebody a poster is it it's like right packaging and, and the experience of getting something and opening it yes. so it's all yeah sort of tied together that's the you know that's the optimal word there is the experience that like vice press would bring to you rather than buying it you know somewhere else i think it you guys walk an incredibly fine line between being that uh you know when you go to like your favorite indie band like there's that merch table and, like you can only get it there but then yeah. you're like well i also wish that i could get it you know, maybe I couldn't make it. So it's it sounds like between both of you and your third beetle uh, that you have to uh, fourth beetle, who fifth? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we were just saying this analogy. We were genuinely looking, though, weren't we, James? We were genuinely looking at how to get the bubblegum smell into a poster tube because yeah, yeah, yeah. that poster is going to be is going to be like a a bubblegum card inspired piece of artwork and we thought it'd be great if <laughs> when you open the tube it smelled like bubblegum. Why not? That's a silly yeah. thing that we could start looking into for, for it's just, just... Little, 
it's the cool. little things isn't it to elevate yeah. that kind of whole thing like we've kind of designed our own tube so they kind of look mm-hmm. quite cool and going back to what you were saying about where you've got indie bands and you've got the merch table and things like that that's why we've found working with like bottle x great and working with sideshow is great because you're we don't we don't wholesale out we don't do that we mm, kind of mostly right. direct customers i think yeah. you guys and bottleneck are the only company we work with externally now because you share that kind of passion you share that yeah. kind of even though you're kind of a larger company it's kind of like we're the we're the epitaph to your warner brothers music kind of thing if that right makes yeah. sense, if that analogy anybody gets but i don't know what you're talking about james <laughs> epitaph music is stuff what is by, this epitaph is owned by warner brothers but they have like green day and rancid and i think uh, right they've like always used to get so you're yeah. saying we're the cool people and sideshow <laughs> <laughs> sure are the big, <laughs> cool the big evil <laughs> yeah <laughs> Maybe there's a better analogy. In just that. evil <laughs> hair is all it is. Yeah. yeah, just the hair is evil. But uh, <laughs> I just like it's it's nice to be open to working with different people. That's been my sort of thing. Is I'm open to work with people and have discussions with people. Yeah. And I don't think it's good to be competitive with other companies all the time. Whereas yeah. you could have an open dialogue and yeah. end up making something better. Yeah, yeah. collaborative this, over competitive any day. So. There's much more of a scene grown here in the UK as a scene. So there's much like over in the States, you have got you kind of Mondo, you've got your bottleneck, there's Sideshow, you guys put out prints, and then you know, Acme and those guys. Over here, before we started, I think there was um Black Dragon Press, who um we know the guy that runs that very well. He's a really he's a really nice chap. And there's a couple of other smaller galleries that have opened up since. And there's absolutely zero benefit in being competitive and kind of standoffish with each other. You right. might as well have a dialogue. Obviously, there's secrets that you keep, you know, you develop stuff yourself and you want to kind of, you put a lot of time and effort and money into that, which you kind of want to be kind of a bit closed off about. But in terms of the day-to-day stuff, it helps to work together. It helps to chat. It helps to get together at conventions and and have all mm-hmm. that kind of um, bit of a bit of a kind of collegiate um, relationship, I guess. Yeah, Mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, and it's why, I mean, I know a lot of the people on the art print side and, you know, some of the folks I'm sure you guys know as well, but it's why we love working with people like you because it's, you've got the same mental model that we do. It's, you know, it's by fans for fans constantly. I mean, every, we were joking behind the scenes. Uh, I think our super producer Rob was saying we have a hundred percent success rate at marketing to our own people. (laughs) And I'm sure if you had, you know, infinite wall space, you guys would have everything you've done because you genuinely love this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Our um, our through. office our office has got is just covered in our own posters and it's kind of we kind of rotate those around and it's it's nice we had um we had a chap come and visit us today from a shipping company and you know it kind of be great because he can see everything that we do and things and it means that he can enjoy it and same as at, at home I mean I've got Drew Millwoods they live there there's a few other prints dotted around the house because right. I'm quite lucky that my wife will allow it. <laughs> Uh, well, gentlemen, we don't want to keep you too long, but we did have um, Matt. We had someone earlier say that they've got a uh, three year prints, ET, Jurassic Park, Jaws, and you did such a great job on those. So, oh, they're um, from the Am- Amblin show. So, the there here, you so. go. Mm-hmm. And um, again, you guys can go to side.show forward slash vice expo. Thank you, uh, Mike. Uh, that is going to take you to everything that is available at sideshow.com from our friends over at Vice Press. And again, check out, uh, I, I, is it? Is it Vice Press? It's not Vice. Is it VicePress.com? No, it's you're, Vice you're Hyphen website. Press because yeah, Vice some company press. that yeah. made tooling machinery already opens that, so owns that. So remember, yeah. collaboration, not competition. We'll start working with them and yeah. get that do- and get that domain. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, gentlemen, thank you guys so, 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 so very much. I mean, um, you guys, I mean, if you guys want even more of James and Matt, seriously, uh, you guys do have your podcast, the open channel podcast, right? Yep. We you want, do. Do we have want a... to let people know a little bit, a tiny bit about that and where they can find you. Yeah, very quickly. It's just a kind of every two, three weeks we get together with Flory and Tom from Dropcast and we just talk, right. generally just talk about stuff that's gone off over the past couple of weeks like yeah. this week yeah. we'll talk about boba fett i'm sure in the multiverse of madness trailer so that uh the next episode is this friday at eight o'clock you yeah eight o'clock uk time <laughs> sorry right. uh, eight o'clock uk time the, uh... 12 e- 12 12 west and three right. east oh okay i think yeah okay yeah, cool. you can expect a perfectly scripted right show oh yeah absolutely yeah. glossy oh, clean. 
Yeah. Yeah. I've usually had a few too many drinks. Mm-hmm. So I'll be a bit loose there. <laughs> yeah. Looser. So we'll yeah, see. Looser. Um, all right, gentlemen, James, Matt, thank you guys so much for joining us, man. Seriously, it was, it was a pleasure. We'll have to have you guys back on soon when um, you finally take over that domain from that tools company. We'll, we'll have to talk about, uh, you know, that little fun kind of victory. Cool. Thank you so much for having us. Brilliant. Really appreciate yeah. it. Thank you, guys. Have a great rest of your night. I'll talk yes. to you later. I mean, you know. Could you meet nicer people? Absolutely not. But we did want to bring you guys, uh, you know, sort of, again, behind the veil of some of the people. Maybe you guys have some vice press um, work. Maybe you don't. But now is the time to do it. Uh, Mike, let's bring up that link again. Side.show forward slash Vice Expo. See everything that Sideshow is carrying from our friends over at Vice Press. Um, again, a huge thank you to Matt. A huge thank you to James. Uh, seriously, the nicest dudes. Go check out the uh, the podcast, the Open Channel podcast. Um, I you know I just googled Open Channel podcast in Vice Press on uh, on YouTube or you know and you can find it there as well. That's where I watch it. I believe it's available on Apple and on Spotify as well. That you can actually watch them on youtube so a huge thank you to those two gentlemen for coming out hanging out with us today i think it's it's getting later there for them so i'm glad uh you know i didn't want we don't want to keep them hostage for too long everyone but all right so shifting gears really quickly we have got uh an event you know still going on the art print expo mike can we bring up the schedule for today of everything that we have go to side.show forward slash expo 22 and that will take you to a blog and let you guys see everything that is the art print expo so we just got through uh with our friends over at vice press at 1 p.m we have another giveaway challenge at 2 p.m we've got scott smith being interviewed by mr alex ronowitz from his uh you know, Scott Smith over at Kincaid. He's got a new Batman print that just went up really sick. So him and Alex are going to sit down, hang out, and I'm sure um, be completely on the rails and super scripted. And it's not going to be uh, nonsensical talking about DC Comics at all. Then at 4 p.m., we've got Win, Lose, or Die with Amy Chase. We've got that as our high stakes sort of choose your own adventure game with a $300 sideshow rewards pot that you can win if you can manage to survive through the entire thing. I'll be there playing and probably losing in the first round. But remember, we've got giveaways, rewards, and uh, we've got groups that you guys can join, side.show forward slash Hall of Frame. That's our new art print group. Seriously, it's, it's, it's so much fun. And if you are a huge fan of art, um, A, again, please, please go to side.show forward slash Vice Expo. Go follow Matt Ferguson on um all of his social channels, go check out Vice Press, go check out their podcast. Um, all right, everyone. Thank you guys so very much for joining me. I will see you guys. Uh, I think I'll see you guys tomorrow. We've got so many things going on tomorrow as well, but today stay tuned again. We've got interviews, we've got giveaways, um, but we'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for hanging out. And as always, don't forget to let your geek side show. Goodbye, everyone. It's a lot more awkward to do like a, a funny,